Chapter 8 Daily Roman Life in the City Part 2 Dave King's Report Let's imagine that you were a child in a wealthy patrician family. Like most patrician families, you live in a large house known in Latin as a domus. The domus has several stories with enough rooms for your large family. Mother, father, children, grandparents, dozens of slaves, and several aunts, uncles, and cousins. It is common to find the family gathered in the atrium, a large open space in the middle of the domus. An atrium features a skylight, or hole in the roof, which creates a bright atmosphere and helps air circulate through the house. If you look closely at the floor, you can see a shallow pool of water in the middle of the atrium. This pool is there to collect rainwater because there is no way to close the skylight. The little pool is also a good place to rinse your feet if they are dusty from the streets. Whether they were plebeians or patricians, all Roman families were organized in a similar way. While many families consisted only of parents and children, it was also very common to find many relatives living together in the same apartment building, if not in the same house. Everyone from grandparents to slaves was considered to be part of the family. The oldest man in the family was called, in Latin, the pater familius, and he was in charge. By law, the pater familius had control over the family's property and money, and he made all the family decisions. He might have arranged whom his children would marry before they were even adults. Roman women were not allowed to vote or run for the Senate or other offices. Women were expected to do whatever the pater familius told them to do. Nevertheless, Roman women did have some rights that women in many other civilizations did not have at the time. Roman women were allowed to own property, so there were many women involved in business. Roman women were usually deeply involved in important decisions involving the home. Patrician women were often moneylenders or landlords, meaning they owned and managed properties in which others paid to live. Most plebeian women had their hands full with domestic duties, which included raising children, cooking, and cleaning they may have also carried on a trade, such as selling food in the market. Wealthy plebeian and patrician women had slaves to do the work for them. Much of their time was spent managing their slaves. The richest families sometimes had hundreds of slaves to manage. Patrician families and friends loved to gather for long, relaxing meals. They would sometimes eat for hours, nibbling at their food drinking wine, and sharing all the latest stories they had heard around town. Rich patricians liked to recline on dining couches during meals. Sometimes they would lie on their stomachs. At least they didn't have to worry about spilling food on their laps. People often ate with their fingers. No need for a fork or spoon, unless they were eating soup. On an average night, however, most plebeian families usually did not have time for long suppers. They probably sat around a table on stools, and their food usually wasn't very elaborate. A typical plebeian family would eat bread and porridge made of grain, along with small helpings of meat and whatever vegetables they had on hand. As the population living in Rome grew, the city became more and more crowded, Although plebeians had opportunities to make money and own property, life was not easy for most of them, because Rome relied so much on grain shipments being imported from across the sea, sometimes there was a food shortage. War and bad weather sometimes delayed those food shipments from arriving at the wharves, and Rome would suddenly become an angry city of thousands of hungry people. Disease was a big problem, too. Romans worked hard to try to keep the city clean, but it was an impossible situation with so many people. As a result, horrible diseases sometimes spread throughout the population.
The life of patricians might have seemed easy compared to the lives of plebeians and slaves, but that doesn't mean the patricians didn't have worries. Patricians were the wealthy elite in Roman society, but there were not as many of them as there were plebeians. As time passed, the ordinary people of Rome, or the mob, as the patricians called them, began to understand that they had power in their numbers. Riots became common. People would rampage through a city, burning and trashing buildings, and generally creating chaos. People rioted most often when there were food shortages. Not surprisingly, this always made the patricians very nervous. The patricians always had plenty of food, and the plebeians knew it. The patricians valued their high position in society and felt thr threatened that the protests of the many plebeians could eventually change their status. So the wealthy Romans came up with a plan that is sometimes called bread and circuses. The idea was basically to distract people from their problems by staging amazing spectacles. This was part of the reason why buildings like the Circus Maximus and the Colosseum were built. Just when the mobs were starting to get restless and wanting to start a riot, the Senate and other patricians would pay for a couple weeks of games to distract unhappy citizens. Usually these games involved chariot races, fights among people and animals, and circus tricks involving trained animals, acrobats, jugglers, and other entertainers. If you have ever been to a circus under a big top tent, you can thank the Romans, because they were one of the first to do it. Of course, our circuses are far tamer than the Roman circuses. Instead of having a lion jump through a hoop, they had lions fighting people. The ultimate spectacles took place in the great amphitheater you have heard about called the Colosseum. Here, gladiators would fight each other for the public's entertainment. Gladiators were often criminals or soldiers that had been captured from enemy armies. Though rare, there were also women fighters called gladiatrices. Believe it or not, some people chose the life of a gladiator for the fame. Gladiators were sometimes forced to fight each other to the death in front of thousands of people. Many gladiators did not live very long. One appearance in the arena was all they got. Roman games were not for the faint of heart. Think about life in Rome from a Roman's perspective. They lived in an incredible city, and they had all kinds of opportunities, but life was still very hard. War, disease, and hunger were always life's obstacles. Medicines and medical care, such as we know today, did not exist in ancient Rome. The Roman legions marched all over the world, with countless Roman soldiers never to be seen or heard from again. At any moment, a foreign army could invade Roman homes, carrying citizens away to a life of slavery. Life for most people during Roman times was short and brutal. They loved their families, but many Romans did not really expect to live a very long life. For all their inventions and immense power, the Romans could not change the fact that their lives were uncertain and dangerous.